So we're going to work on something called the addition rule. The addition rule is for when we start calculating probabilities of compound events. For instance, the probability of randomly selecting somebody from this group that has blood type A or blood type B. So uh, a good thought or a good approach would be this. The probability of A plus the probability of B. And let's see if that works. What's the probability of randomly selecting somebody from these 100 people that has a blood type of A? Yeah, 40 over 100 or 40%. Likewise, for B, 10%. Overall, there's a 50% chance of randomly selecting somebody with a blood type of A or B. All right, nothing too dramatic about that. Let's look at a different calculation. And hold on to your questions until I, I finish up here, or maybe I'll have one for you. What's the probability of getting somebody that's RH positive or... An A. If we follow the example from the previous calculation, we'd be doing this. Probability of an RH positive plus the probability of an A. What's the probability of getting somebody that's RH positive? Yeah, 86%. 86 over 100. What's the probability of getting somebody of blood type A? 40 over 100. So 126 over 100. This should be a little slap in the face. There should be something glaringly wrong with this one. What is it? What's glaringly wrong with this probability? Yeah, it's yeah. Well, you got to the problem. Uh, the, there's there was a double counting here. But what's what's really wrong with this is that it's greater than one. You can't have a probability greater than one. The most it can be is 1. So if you get a result like this on a test, like, wait a minute, that's 1.26, that's bigger than 1, please stop and go back and fix something. If you can't find what to fix, then fudge something. Make it look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, they're like, no, I know they can't be. Uh, I'll just randomly subtract 0.3 here, and then we'll end up with uh, something that's less than 1. But, but in all seriousness, you can't have a probability this big. So... I think you spotted what's going on with this one, and that is there's a double counting. So the probability that somebody is RH positive, that came from this row. And the probability that someone had blood type A came from this column. So that there was a double counting of part of this group, right? Where was the, how would you describe the double counted group? Yeah, so we double counted this group right here of A positive, all right? So if I wanted to fix this, what I would have to do is subtract off the intersection of these two. So I'll subtract off probability of RH positive and A. So how many people are in that group? that are RH positive. Yeah, the intersection would be 35. So that now if we calculate this, calculate the difference, we get something that does make sense. It's 91 over 100. So this leads us to um, a nice general rule for working with probability of A or B. I'll have two different rules, but the general rule is this. Probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of their intersection, basically where they overlap. And what this is doing is it's subtracting off that piece where you double counted. So 
anywhere where they overlap, get counted twice, and you subtract off that piece. Well, how come I got away with that in the first one? How come I... Good. There is no intersection. And that makes these things special. So the special rule, special addition rule, applies to what are called disjoint or mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive or disjoint events. Mutually exclusive or disjoint events are events that cannot happen at the same time. You can't vote Republican and Democrat for one office at the same time. You have to choose one or the other. Um, you can't be, well, I don't want to do that one. Um, it's heads or tails. It can't be both. So it's one or the other is a mutually exclusive event. If that's true, if you have a mutually exclusive event, this becomes a zero because you can't have one and the other. So in that case, probability A or B is simply the sum of both probabilities. Probability of A plus the probability of B. Let's practice this a little bit, understanding um, mutually exclusive or disjoint events with a couple of examples from the book. Now, one way that I, I suggest people think of disjoint or mutually exclusive events is ask yourself, can both things happen at the same time? So let's look at a couple examples here. So it says, determine whether events are disjoint. Um, two events are disjoint for a single trial. Consider disjoint to be equivalent to separate or not overlapping. Um, asking for a date through a Twitter post, asking for a date in French, uh, the Romance language. Yeah, those could overlap. Je parle français, oui, monsieur. All right. Um, so yeah, so those aren't disjoint. Um, how about moving down to problem number 12 here? randomly selecting a drug screening result and getting one that is a false positive, randomly selecting a drug screening result and getting one that is a false negative. Yeah, you can't get a false positive and a false negative, so these would be a disjoint. They cannot happen at the same time. There's no overlap between those two things. So, All right, here's probably a good place to stop it. Um, just try problems 1 through 11 in the homework, and we'll see you next week.